just because the Lord loves you does not mean that he won't let you suffer, that he won't let you enter the grave. Today, we hear of Lazarus, the one whom our Lord loved, who rather than going at once with haste, like his mother on her way to visit her cousin Elizabeth, he instead waits, not a few hours, not till evening, but two days. Why, Lord? If you loved Lazarus, why would you not go at once to see him, to heal him, to save him? Is it perhaps because there's something bigger than Lazarus going on here? Lord, why would you not appear at once and show forth your glory, your power to heal, that all might see your splendor and believe in you? Is it maybe because his saving power is for beyond the grave? When our Lord arrives, finally, he says to Martha, your brother will rise. And Martha says, yes, Lord, I know that my brother will eventually rise, that he will rise like all the rest, all the faithful ones in their resurrection on the last day. But then, our Lord reveals the greater mystery at hand in this whole event, saying, Martha, I am the resurrection, and I am the life. Whoever believes in me will live, and he who lives and believes will never die. Do you believe this? Yes, Lord, she says. I have come to believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God. But my brother is already dead. How is he dead if those who believe in you never die? And is that not the mystery of our entire faith? How can this person who has died somehow live, somehow be alive? And this great mystery is the power of our faith, the foundation, the glorious power that God keeps hidden to our earthly eyes. For we cannot see our deceased loved ones rise. We cannot see their souls being lifted to our Lord. But that we might know of his ability, of his great power, he gives us to our earthly eyes and earthly ears, the proof that he is indeed able, that he is capable of raising the dead. He gives us to hear with our ears those words, take away the stone. Lazarus, come out. And to see with our eyes this young man whom we ourselves buried, now standing, walking, now very much alive, to see with our eyes this Lazarus, this sign of things to come, Lazarus, this glimpse of glory, Lazarus, the example that we are to follow. But before we can follow after Lazarus, before we can rise and live, we too must enter the grave. I say this, ultimately speaking, right? That for us to experience eternal life, we must die. But I say this also specifically to the present moment. Perhaps our tomb, our grave, is the confines of our own homes. The grave is inevitable. Much like actual tombs, it has been forced upon us to quarantine ourselves within our homes. For some of us, this may be extremely trying, especially if we have short fuses or if we have trouble with the relationships within our home. The grave is not comfortable, nor is it easy. Some even may think this is all ridiculous, right? Unnecessary, and just choose to do as I please, attempting to live our own way, attempting 
to outrun the inevitable. And yet, and yet, we know that beyond this grave, this quarantine, is new life, is health, is healing. So then, why is the only thing I want right now to not be entombed, right? To not be quarantined, to simply give someone a high five even? Is it perhaps because we are still grappling with the reality that we must die on the Lord's terms, not on ours? We hear this gospel today and we expect that we are on the last day, we ourselves, that we will hear at any moment, rise, come out. But perhaps we are only on day one in the grand scheme of things. Perhaps the stone has not been rolled away, that our Lord has yet to arrive at our tomb to bring us new life. Maybe today is the day that our Lord weeps. So then, how are you to dwell within this tomb until he comes? When Lazarus was awakened, when he rose and walked, there was no stench but the sweet-smelling sense of myrrh. There were no horrid sights or sounds or moaning, but the graceful appearance of a resurrected man in dazzling white. How will you prepare yourself to be found acceptable when our Lord arrives at your tomb, your tomb of quarantine, and calls you to come out? For how we die now determines how we will live forever. Amen.